built by Germans, designed by an Italian, and infused with the literal DNA from one of the most iconic American muscle cars of all time, and it has a French name? This is everything you need to know about the Boker 1969 Camaro knife. Besides having an international laundry list that could get any car or knife guy drooling, there are two things that you need to know about Boker's Camaro knife. First, the blade is American-made Chad Nichols Damascus that has literal parts of a 1969 Camaro car in it. More on that later. And second, the story of this knife could start a year ago, 44 years ago, 55 years ago, or over 300 years ago. So, like any good story, we're gonna start at the beginning. In broad strokes, Boker has been making knives for just about 350 years in a little German town called Zollingen. That's 197 years before the Germany as we know it was even a unified state. They've survived wars, famines, regime changes, and very well may be the oldest continual knife maker in the world. It's fair to say that they know a thing or two about making knives and heritage. Fast forward a few centuries to 1980, and Boker was ready to add another notch to their knife innovation belt by being the first production company to put a Damascus blade on a pocket knife. In large part, this is due to the German Damascus wizard, Manfred Saxe. This kicked off Boker's and the knife industry's regular integration of Damascus blade on pocket knives. It also kicked off Boker's annual Damascus knife program that creates a special edition Damascus knife limited to only 999 units globally. Unknown to Boker at the time, there was an iconic American-made car rolling off assembly lines 11 years earlier that was going to take their Damascus innovation to a whole new level. 1969 may very well be the most Americana year in our country's history. It's right up there with Coca-Cola and apple pie. It's the year that we walked on the moon, we saw the first Woodstock, and we move forward important conversations on civil rights issues. It's the year we saw Elvis return to his true form. We saw the creation of the internet, Sesame Street, and the Boeing 747. We also enjoyed some of the best or first albums from iconic bands like The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, Janis Joplin, CCR, and The Jackson 5. Admittedly, not all those groups are American, but they were all feeding off of one of our greatest inventions and exports at the time, rock and roll. In chorus with all of these greats in first, rolling out of factories in California and Ohio was a great and last, the 1969 Camaro. Arguably the most iconic year of the Chevy Camaro and the last year of its first generation. The Camaro was designed to compete with the pony class of cars that the Ford Mustang had created a few years earlier and saw its first introduction in 1967. Originally codenamed Panther, the Chevy Camaro was introduced in what was at the time the world's largest teleconference call, a huge 14-way multi-city call. Now, admittedly, that doesn't seem like much in today's standards, but in 1966, it was such a big deal that it made headlines. Along with the record-breaking call, Chevy released a 30-minute movie that played on TV stations and movie theaters all over the country. They produced a musical stage performance that toured 25 different cities called Camaro. Gladys, play the music! And they even had a woman's fashion line that if you bought something from that line, you would be entered to win a brand new Chevy Camaro. Famously, Pete Este, Chevrolet's general manager at the time, announced the Camaro with a mic drop. To quote, the Panther is dead, long live the Camaro. And then he just hung up. There were so many questions that were unanswered. First off, why did somebody sacrifice a Panther to create a new Chevy? What the heck is a Camaro? And why didn't we use this new internet thing to have this call? Some questions were answered and some were not. Namely, what the heck is a Camaro? Pete Este originally said that it was based on an old French word that meant pal, which would invoke camaraderie between man and machine, which is a great sentiment. But after journalists did a little bit digging and a few years later, Pete was pressed on this because there was no evidence. So in that press conference, he ended up just saying kind of under his breath, it's a small vicious animal that eats Mustangs. And eat Mustangs the early Camaro did. Not only did it beat Ford in the very important 1968 and 1969 Trans-American Championship that spanned the respective year and the entire country, including important raceways and heritage races such as 24 hours at Daytona and 12 hours of Sebring, it only took a few years for the Camaro to start outselling the Mustang. It was really these early Camaro versus Mustang arguments that started the eternal war between Chevy and Fords. Whether you're a Ford, Chevy, or even a Mopar guy, you have to admit that that 69 Camaro is a work of art. And even if you're not a car person at all, 
you have to admit that those old vintage cars have something about them that's just beautiful, raw, and powerful. So how the heck did a German legacy knife company end up with bits and parts of an iconic American classic car in one of their knives? To answer this question, we decided to head to Boker's USA headquarters in Denver, Colorado, to talk to our good friend and CEO owner of Boker, Karsten. Yeah, my name is Karsten Felix. I'm the CEO of uh, Boker. In 2005, a Damascus bladesmith from Germany came to us and showed us uh, a ring, a metal ring, yeah. and said, what, what do you think that is? And I said, I have no idea. And I said, yeah, I cut this out of the barrel of the leopard tank, the right. battle tank. And he said, what do you think of making a Damascus blade out of it? I said, brilliant. And he said, really? Because other guys kicked me out, out of the door. <laughs> right. And I said, no. So we came out with the leopard. And that was the beginning of a success story and we couldn't believe. So we covered the gun part pretty well, the weapon part pretty well. So we sat down and said, hey, what else is interesting? Very soon, cars yeah. popped up, right? We're talking about the United States, yes. muscle cars all day, right? Yeah. I mean, and you could, you could go like 50s to late 70s in that range. Mm -hmm. But where you guys landed, I think, yeah. was really cool, at least for the, for the first one. We start with the Camaro, 1969 Z28. And then the project started. Number one, we have to get original parts. Yeah. It's always original parts, yeah. right? Yeah. Forged into the blade. Very tricky because the original cars cost a fortune. The guys for the cars need the parts, right? Yeah, you, you don't want to destroy history, no, right? No, never. Which is, well, all these projects are about borrowing, but never Correct. destroying. But yeah. with a car, it's different because yes. every one of these guys are looking for, oh, this one pan, or yeah. this one control arm, or exactly. whatever it may be. Maybe, right? exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. It took some time, but we were able to source parts without damaging a car. We have the idea, we have the parts, let's design the knife. So now that we have the why, what does the how look like? The Boca Camaro knife was designed by Tommaso Ramici, an Italian knife nerd turned knife designer in 2006. Tommaso's design process is both romantic and cutting edge, which really makes him the perfect pick for this knife. He designs everything on paper using old school drafting techniques and then works with some of the most cutting edge factories to bring his designs to life. He also happens to be a good guy. The aluminum handle of the Camaro knife is a Pantone match Le Mans blue with a shape very similar to the actual car, including a tribute to the rear fender louvers on the show side of the knife. A slim stainless steel pocket clip reminiscent of the chrome plated door handles, as well as pivot hardware that's been shaped after the stock wheels on the 69. It's no easy task to make a knife handle look and feel like the car that inspires it without it looking like a cheap gas station knife. And that's a huge testament to Tommaso's skill. These well thought out and executed tributes are rare, but not singular. What is singular about the Boker Camaro knife is its Damascus blade that is made in part of actual 1969 Camaro. In short, Damascus steel is the welding together of two or more alloys to create a blade that has the best properties of all of those alloys. There's more to be said about Damascus and its history that can be said in a single video. Ancient Damascus is steeped in lore. It said that it never dulled, that it could cut a hair floating in the air in half, that it could be bent at a 90 degree and returned to its original position, and that it was quenched in dragon's blood. While the claims of the magical Far Eastern Damascus actually have some validity, the process has been lost to time. There is today at least one steel alchemist deep in the Southern United States carrying on and advancing this near mystical art. And his name is Chad Nichols. To find out exactly what spells Chad was using to incorporate bits and parts of the Camaro into his blade steel, we took a road trip out to his headquarters and shop in Mississippi. I've been making steel for Boker probably since 2009 or eight. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. just came to us and they said, uh, you know, do you mind like if we get you certain materials, you know, throwing it in the mix and giving the story a little more story. Yeah, because we were talking earlier and you were saying Damascus already kind of has a, right. a story to it, right. right? Yeah. And so then, you know, you start adding these historical elements and it's like, oh, wow, it's like even more. Right. right? What was the process like? I mean, with that first, that, that first bit of stuff with the Camaro, you get source material, it comes to you. Right, we clean it up, do what we need to do with it, throw it in the billets and, yeah. and rock and roll. And make magic. Right, cool. Well, I wouldn't know about magic, but yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of part of the Damascus story, well, yeah. right, is, is the magic of the Damascus it's, steel. It's hot, nasty, dirty work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you guys do it well. Thank you. <laughs> with the design perfected and the blades expertly crafted, all the elements come together in Boker's German factory in Zollingen, a city whose official nickname that can be found on signs all over is the City of Blades. It's here that all the pieces are machined and assembled very much like the car whose name the knife carries. By not just employees, but by career and passion-driven apprentices 
journeymen, and masters that have been learning the art of knife making for decades and are part of that unbroken 350 years of making cutlery. From ideation to design to production and assembly, the Boker 69 Camaro knife is about bridging the best of the new world with the best of the old world. And while this knife has the process, price tag, and presentation of something that you would want to put up on a shelf or in a museum, exactly like any 1969 Camaro that's still running today. I'm of the mind with both pieces of art that you have to destroy it to enjoy it. And what I mean by that is that you have to use and carry the thing to really be able to appreciate it. Now, I can't afford a 1969 Camaro, and I wasn't born anywhere near that golden age of rock and roll. But with a little planning and a little savings, I can afford to carry a little bit of it with me. To most people, this could be just a knife. And the reality of it is, is that most things are just that, things. But a thing with a story, with purpose, with history, becomes something more. It has a soul, a direction of its own, an unspoken voice that represents that purpose, history, and story to the user. It's like a token that can transport us back to those things. And I think you could do a lot worse than having a token that can transport you back to the best parts of the good old USA in 1969. So get yourself a Camaro knife, turn on some real rock and roll, and find a nice stretch of two-lane blacktop to roll out onto.